Okay, I showed you how to uh, put a um, Schrader valve on top of a masonry jar. And what you got to do is you got to use the right solder. It's actually more silver than solder. It's very expensive and it has a flux and it has to be cleaned real good with a nice stainless steel clean brush. And, um, and uh, you can actually braise copper to brass. And uh, I did a lot of reefer units, uh, thermal kings and carriers. And um, there's, um, when it goes into defrost, there's actually a valve in, uh, that causes it to go in and out. And uh, they're actually metal uh, brass to uh, copper, so you need to use that. So it's for a different application. Today, what we're going to learn how to use is um, just a good old basic uh, turbo torch with brazing rod, silver alloy. And uh, we're going to actually use this to make a wedge. Uh, and then uh, we're going to braise two pieces of copper together and then we're also going to learn how to make a flare. You know like when you come up to a compressor and you want to, let's say this is our compressor or canister, okay, and it's a sealed canister and I want to actually hook a flare nut to it like this and put a flare on it. So the first thing I'm going to want to do uh, is I'm going to take my uh, cutters, I'm going to cut back on the pipe, not too short but just cut back enough if I can get a nice good edge and then take this and ream out the inside and clean it so that it's nice and clean slip on your flare nut take your tool here find that the, it actually it has the numbers on it three quarters half inch this is this is quarter inch and we're gonna stick it in here and we're gonna leave uh, approximately I don't know half inch or so out. Okay. And then you're going to take this. You're going to make sure you got this nice and tight so that the pipe don't slip out. Then you're going to take this and you're going to put it on here. And you're going to screw down on it, tightening it. And it's going to flatten out into a nice flare. If you have too much sticking out or if you smash it down it will split. So you don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to underdo it either. Okay. And now we went from this to this. A nice flare on there. And you look at it, it's it's not all burred up. And it and doesn't have a bunch of burrs on it because I cleaned it before I made it. And then I didn't overdo it so there's no cracks and it fits on the flare nice. Okay, and now the nut doesn't come off. And we can now put our connection onto the compressor. And it'll get a nice good seal there. Which we learned in the last video that uh, if you don't get a good seal, then you won't get a good vacuum and you'll have non-condensables and uh, you're going to start saturating the filter dryer you're going to start having issues with the unit it's going to start running high hey, you have all kinds of problems with putting non condensables in the unit so having a good seal after fixing a leak making sure the unit is sealed good and has a filter dryer on it will help keep it running and lasting a long time okay now that we made our flare we're now going to learn how to make a wedge same thing we're going to take this tool we're going to find the number of what we're using, it's still quarter inch. Is have it sticking out about an inch. Now I can't stress this enough. You must get this tight on there so that the pipe doesn't slip around. Okay, should take three times to make to a wedge. <laughs> Some reason it wants it's all it just wants to go all the way in. Okay, after hitting it a few times, make sure you get the wedge all the way up in there. <coughs> Take it out of the tool. Take a piece of the copper that you're going to now attach it to, and you're going to clean it up some. It doesn't have to be virgin, but it has to be pretty clean. Put it inside your wedge. There you go, nice tight fit. We're going to take this and we're going to stick it right here, and we're going to actually graze it. Okay. Now, what's important to know is 
we're not going to heat this side. We're going to heat the part where the wedge is because we want it to draw the brazing rod in. Okay. Also, the end of the torch you are using matters because if you're using um, any, uh, you're doing three quarters or one inch pipe, a little tor turbo torch tip like this isn't going to cut it. <coughs> and then they actually have bigger tips that will go on here so that you can braise different diameter pipe. This will do quarter inch without a, without a problem. Okay. This is what a good flame looks like. Nice and round. Shooting out of the tip a little bit. And so you can see that the end of the tip didn't get red so there was enough gas sufficient gas going through now the other thing is is when I turn this flame on there's a little tip that's blue there's a flame that's on top of that but there's an, an exact like little crown around here of blue the end the very end of that tip is the hottest point of this torch and that's the parts you want to use to get the good penetration that you need to get the job done so let's turn it on again. So notice I'm going to take the end of that blue tip and I'm going to get as close as I can to that uh, wedge. And notice I'm back on the wedge and I'm going to heat that up and I'm going to test the water. If, if it doesn't melt immediately when I touch it, it will be hot enough. See, immediately. Now I'm ready to uh, do what I need to do. Okay. Usually what I do is hit it once, it goes around it, and then I kind of put a small bead around it um, to make sure that... Uh, so the first one I get penetration, the second one is kind of like my little signature, you know. So let me stay on that pipe and I'm going to get a rag. Because we're not hooking this up to a unit, we ain't worried about moisture. I'm just going to go ahead and throw a wet rag on it. They do have, let's say you're working next to a valve on a condenser or a compressor and you need to do some brazing. They have this cool gel which you put around uh, the uh, um, valve or around the valve stem if you're doing it on a central air because you don't want to overheat that valve, you'll cause an issue. Okay, so you can either use that kind of gel or you could just take a wet rag and wrap the valve. Okay so that you don't damage the valve. You want to be really... and the other thing is is remove your Schrader valves before you start doing your brazing. Okay. Now that we look at it, it's perfect all the way around. See? Nice and perfect. So the key is, is to heat the wedge, draw the, saw, the brazing rod in, and then and what you want to do is you want to heat it and barely touch it with the rod and it melts instantly then you're ready to start doing your brazing. You'll get that quick draw in and then just put yourself a nice little bead around it to make it look like it's just one solid piece and uh, and see it looks great. So there you have it we made a wedge and we did a flare nut. So uh, that's how you do it and uh, so they go with it. This is a necessary part of the equipment that you need to do the job, as well as wire, as well as uh, different variety sizes of uh, um, cutters. So, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll answer them. Thanks.